Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. New at noon, a suspect taken away in handcuffs. This comes after a shooting at a Southside Park. Two teenagers were hurt in that shooting and one of them was paralyzed. Police arrested Roman Aaron Bell on two charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Police say they executed a search warrant for Bell's cell phone. As GPS coordinates placed him at Kingsborough Park back on December 28th. That's near Mirsund and East Gillette Boulevard. Officers accusing Bell of shooting a 16 year old boy and an 18 year old man. Police say they may have been meeting for a drug deal involving marijuana. San Antonio firefighters are trying to figure out how a fire found its way into a home that was supposed to be vacant. The flames and the smoke early this morning destroying the home in the 7400 block of Buckskin. That's on the west side near Loop 410 and Highway 90. And as Katrina Whipper tells us, they're looking into the possibility that someone also had gotten into the home. It was a sight that a neighbor couldn't help but capture on her camera phone. Cassandra Medina shared her video of the huge flame she noticed at a home across the street around four this morning. San Antonio firefighters say there's no telling how long it actually had been burning. They found no one there. We do know that there wasn't electricity or gas to the, to the, to the house for about a year. Firefighters say the homeowner, who arrived later in tears, told them the house in the 7400 block of Buckskin was supposed to be vacant. But neighbors reported seeing what appeared to be squatters there for some time. In fact, fire crews found the front door wide open. I can't say whether it's, you know, intentional or not, but I can tell you that there was people in and out of that house. Firefighters put up a tough battle, but the flames and smoke got the best of the house. Once things cooled down, they called in a team of investigators to begin figuring out how it started. Fire investigators have been spending a lot of time focusing on this end of the house. They believe it started there in the kitchen and then spread throughout. In the end, there was very little left standing. The fire opened up a makeshift window that offered a view clear to the backyard. No people were hurt, although there were reports of missing pets. But firefighters say in a search of the ruins, they found no animals. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now to the latest on a shooting investigation on the northwest side. San Antonio police say that a man has died after he was shot several times overnight. It happened just before midnight on Babcock Road near 410. Police say that the man was sitting in his car when someone began shooting at him. The suspect then pushed the victim out of the vehicle and drove off in it. Officers found the man in the middle of the parking lot. He later died at the hospital. Police say the investigation and search for the suspect is still going on. And crews say a propane leak is the cause of another overnight fire. This one was at a small taco restaurant on the city's south side. It happened on Roosevelt Avenue just inside Loop 410. Crews say a propane leak caused a small explosion. No one was hurt, but the restaurant is being called a total loss with damages estimated around $80,000. Happening today, after more than five decades in the political arena, Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf will deliver his final state of the county address. Part of that event also including a discussion with Wolf and San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg. They're expected to touch on several topics, including the future of Bear County. Last October, Wolf announced he would not seek reelection. You can watch Wolf's remarks on our website. We'll be live streaming the event. It's set to begin around 1230. Stop the Bleed. It is a training program to help people learn about bleeding CPR. The one day event happening tomorrow. Many people are familiar with CPR to help the heart continue to beat. However, bleeding CPR is for an injury situation when someone is bleeding to death. Traumatic injuries are the number one cause of death in people ages one through 44. Experts say a person can bleed to death in less than five minutes. For more information about the event and how you can help save someone's life, you can go to our website at KSAT.com. A number of nonprofits that work to help people in the community are getting some support so they can reach more folks. An advertising agency awarding more than $600,000 to nine organizations today. Some of the nonprofits include Soldiers Angels, Brighton Center, and Guide Dogs of Texas. The organization says this donation will allow them to help families not only here in San Antonio, but now all across the state. 
This um, check is huge for Guide Dogs of Texas. We place guide dogs all over the state of Texas, especially here in San Antonio, uh, where our headquarters is. Um, this check will help go to providing freedom and mobility to blind clients across the state, um, which can impact not only the client, but their families, so that our clients can go out and uh, provide for their families and take care of their families. Earlier this year, the agency behind the donation, the PM Group, presented more than $100,000 to San Antonio Sports and Blue Cares. Philanthro Pitch it is a unique program that prepares innovative and ready to grow nonprofits to pitch their case for funding. Here in San Antonio, it is kind of like a shark tank for philanthropies. Max Massey shows us last night's donations are helping local initiatives make a big difference. Hello. Overwhelming, for sure. So much support, um, not even just from you know the, the groups that, that gave to us yesterday, but just even people in the audience, biking, com uh, the bicycle community here in San Antonio showed up for me, so very overwhelming. Christina Ramirez is the executive director of Earn a Bike. It's a local nonprofit with a mission to promote active and healthy living by increasing access to bicycles. Right now we are with Harlandale ISD, SAISD, Southside ISD is what we're going to be working on this year. And last night, Christina and Erna Bike, they were awarded more than $55,000 thanks to Philanthropitch. This is an innovative competition that brings nonprofits together to really master their pitch. Uh, share that with the audience and panel of judges in order to get funding in a very democratic way. Since its founding, Philanthropitch has donated more than $2 million to 135 nonprofits. Philanthropitch exists really to, um, to give exposure to these nonprofits first and foremost, uh, and then of course fund them and engage people in the process of philanthropy. And even though this program is called Earn a Bike, and yes, it does involve bikes, this program is so much more than that. It helps them be empowered, you know, they were able to uh, hit those milestones and keep up, you know, that positive behavior. And at the end of it, you know, they are given the opportunity to celebrate that with something that they've earned, they've achieved, they got all on their own. So it's empowerment, you know, and of course they're learning about health and nutrition and wellness aspects. And now with all of these checks and these donations, Christina and Erna Bike can help more students in and around our community. Definitely uh, building out this program, you know, Right now we are in certain districts, um, but expanding that, reaching more students, reaching more families, uh, I think that would be really impactful for our city. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. If you go for a walk at Brackenridge Park today, you might be greeted by a very unfamiliar sight, a herd of goats. Why the city brought them in, still ahead. And the magic once again with Orlando. This time they end up with the top pick in the upcoming NBA draft. Larry Mirrors with the complete draft order, including where the Spurs will be picking next month. A lively musical celebration, make it a comeback in person after changes had to be made during the pandemic. After the break, Tiffany Huertas is gonna show us what to expect at this year's Tejano Conjunto Festival. After being canceled in 2020, then running online last year, the Tejano Conjunto Festival is back for a week of in-person events. San Antonio celebrating 40 years of the festival and attracting thousands of music lovers. Tiffany Huertas takes us to the Conjunto Dance for Seniors at Rosedale Park and explains how this music continues to evolve over time. It's Puro San Antonio, it's Puro South Texas, you know, it's the best of our region. The longest running Conjunto Festival in the country is back. I love it, I, I love to be here. It's not Conrado Cruz's first time at the event. You meet a lot of people. Over the course of four days, there will be over 10,000 people coming to this festival from across the country and internationally. The first Conjunto Festival started in 1982 at Market Square. Hunter Chavez playing with Conjunto Hall of Fame artist Felipe Perez is a special moment. So to be able to play today and especially with uh, Felipe Perez, it's, it's truly an honor and, and I'm looking forward to it and excited for it. Uh, many of the Conjunto greats of that era, well, they're, they're no longer here. And we have a new generation of Conjunto musicians taking the sound forward. Concerts will be held through Sunday. Reasons to come are simple. To have a good time yeah, and enjoy themselves and dance. Exercise a little bit. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 
Look at Tiffany Ware just getting out on the dance floor. Nice Showing us how to done. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. Early in the morning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I might add. Woo, it's already a hot one out there right now, and we've got temperatures raising by another 10 degrees this afternoon. Let's take a quick check of the aquifer. The aquifer is unfortunately down three tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours. That aquifer lever can level part of me continues to fall well below the monthly average because we just have not seen any healthy rains. Molds and grass are present, but in low amounts in today's pollen count. And as we take a look outside, we've got clearing skies, 86 degrees, gusty winds from the south up to 21 miles per hour. Now here's the thing, dew points are falling, the humidity is falling, and much like yesterday, this afternoon is not necessarily going to be humid. That's going to allow for temperatures to spike up, and so we're forecasting a high of 99 degrees this afternoon in San Antonio, even hotter off to the west. Today could be the fifth day in a row of record tying or breaking temperatures. There is some relief though in our future and even the possibility for some rain. I'll detail it all coming up. If you head out to Breckenridge Park this afternoon, you might notice you're not alone. In fact, there are about 150 goats out there, and they're on the job for you. Yeah, the city hired these hungry hooved animals to help clear out the overgrowth of plants at the park. The goats were brought in since they naturally graze on many varieties of grasses and plants, and they'll get into nooks and crannies that are difficult for Lawn keepers and lawn mowers, it makes them an eco-friendly way to clear out unwanted brush or plants, and it seems they do quick work. This has all been done overnight, basically during the day and night, yes. It's amazing to me, I walked up this just now and I thought, my God, those are some efficient goats. San Antonio Parks and Rec say that they got the idea to bring in the goats, they're all tired from eating all night. <laughs> They got this idea from the Houston Arboretum. For the past three years, the Arboretum's brought in goats to help control their vegetation around the ponds and savannah. The herd of Brackenridge Park is going to be here through the end of the month. And if they do a good job, the city says they're going to get some more work at other local parks. Yeah, if we don't get some rain, they're not going to be working much, though, because they'll eat all that yeah, up. Yeah, but that's part of nothing. the problem is all that dry brush, even yeah. though it's dying or dead, goats will eat. Yeah. anything they basically will. even the trash they will <laughs> oh my goodness but hey guys we do have the hope for some rain in in our future over the next seven days so that is some nice information let's start though by just kind of recapping the fact that we're in the middle of a record heat streak okay so since saturday may 14th we have seen temperatures either tying or breaking the record. Saturday, we got up to 97, tying the record. Sunday, we got up to 98, beating the record of 96. Monday, we tied. And yesterday, we soared past that record of 98. We got to 100 degrees. So what does today have in store? Well, the record for the day is 98, and we're forecasting 99. So it is going to be another day likely where we'll see that record either tied or broken for the fifth day in a row. May has been off to a sizzling start. And looking at the satellite in temperatures, we did have some clouds out there early this morning, but those have since cleared, and we're seeing temperatures on the rise. It's already 93 in Pleasanton, 95 in Catula, 88 in Del Rio, 84 in Uvalde, 82 in Curve. We'll zoom in here and you can see the metro view. It's 86 in New Braunfels, 84 in Converse, 90 at Stinson, 88 in Hondo, 87 in Bandera, and 82 up in Kerrville. It's also a little breezy. We've got winds from the south gusting up to 20, 25 miles per hour in many places. And those gusty winds are going to be with us for the remainder of the day. This afternoon, temperatures are going to rise by some uh, 10 to 15 degrees from where they're at right now. It'll be 99 in San Antonio, 97 in Canyon Lake. 
Lake, 98 in Comfort, 100 in Bandera, and 101 in Sabinal. So even hotter off to the west. Here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast as you're planning the rest of your day. Heading out this afternoon, south winds will be gusty. It's going to be mostly sunny and hot, topping off at 99. That would break the high uh, record for the day. And tonight, temperatures are going to stay in the 80s. So it's going to be a warm, breezy evening with mostly clear skies. We'll do it all over again tomorrow, but that pesky heat high has started to weaken and push on off to the east. That's going to open up the opportunity for a trough of low pressure to bring us a chance for showers and storms starting Friday night. And I say chance there because not everyone is going to see rain, but as we look at our future cast as that trough approaches from the west on Friday from uh, North Texas all the way down to San Antonio here, we'll see some isolated to scattered showers and storms. Now because of the time of the year, because we have the ingredients there, some of these could be on the strong side, but the chance for rain Friday night is about 30%. So again, not everybody's going to get rain, but that chance is there. Then it's going to stay hot through Saturday, but by Sunday morning, a cool front is going to sweep through Texas and make it to San Antonio, dropping our highs into the 80s, not only on Sunday, but for a good portion of this upcoming week. So we have got a pattern change in store for us, and it's nice to see that chance uh, for uh, cooler weather and the chance for rain too. Still though, it's going to be hot today, tomorrow and Friday, as well as on Saturday, but Friday night we introduced that 30% chance for storms. That front will move through on Sunday. We'll keep a chance for an isolated shower storm in the forecast Saturday and Sunday, but then as we head into next week, a bit of a messy weather pattern is a good thing for us because it means that we keep a chance for rain in the forecast Monday and Tuesday, and we may even be able to bump up those rain chances too. So continue to keep up to date with the forecast. We could all use rain and not triple digit temperatures. <laughs> oh, that would be nice. Thank you, Sarah. See, I think the Spurs and a lot of fans have something in common. They didn't make the playoffs for three years in a row, and a lot of fans ended up watching the NBA draft lottery for the third year in a row, which we don't normally do. Well, and I'll tell you what, for third year in a row, Spurs are upset, right? They didn't make the playoffs, but Spurs yeah. fans are upset because they wanted the Spurs to tank so they can get a higher draft pick, possibly. Anyways, well, it didn't work out. The Spurs made it into the play-in series, of course, so their odds to get a top-four pick not so good so they got the ninth pick and last night in the eastern conference finals jimmy butler dominated coming up spurs great david robinson was sent to chicago to represent the silver and black for the nba draft lottery last night with a four and a half percent chance to land the number one pick and a combined 20 percent chance to be in the top four the spurs wound up with the number nine overall selection just like the odds had them at 50.7% to come up ninth. That number nine lottery pick will be teamed with number 20 from Toronto and number 25 from Boston in the first round. So what did the Admiral think of being the Spurs rep? It is a little bit funny in that, you know, it's a, everyone's uh, kind of being nice to you, but rooting against you. And, <laughs> and so it's a, it's a little bit of an interesting atmosphere and um, great to see all these guys that I used to play against. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, you know, a lot of drama. You know, they do a good job of kind of, you know, making it exciting. And for a minute there, you think you're going to get that number one pick. But, uh, but you know, I, I, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy for us to have a top ten pick. That's amazing. The Orlando Magic won the NBA draft lottery for the first time since 2004 when they selected Dwight Howard. It marks the fourth time overall Orlando had lottery magic, including back-to-back -back years in 1992 and 93, where they took Shaquille O'Neal and in 93 traded the rights to Chris Webber for Penny Hardaway. Uh, how can I describe it? You know, uh, you never, you go into these things, we had a 50-50 shot, I think, of top three or, or four to six. And um, obviously, there's no uh, uh, strategy involved. I feel like the lottery is kind of a special event because it, it just makes us all fans. Basically, we're all just rooting for our team and hoping that number pops up the right way. So um, but 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 teams are built on these breaks. So uh, it's an important night for us. And, and obviously, we're thrilled to um, have caught our break. 
Here's how the rest of the lottery went down last night. The Oklahoma City Thunder won the second overall pick. The Houston Rockets are third, Sacramento Kings fourth, and Detroit basketball rounds out the top five. India is sixth, the Trailblazers seventh, New Orleans eighth, the Spurs are ninth, and the Washington Wizards come in at number 10. The Eastern Conference Finals tipped off last night with the Boston Celtics at the Miami Heat. Boston played without starters Marcus Smart due to a foot injury in Al Horford because of health and safety protocols. So Jason Tatum carried Boston in the first half, scoring 21 points to help Boston lead 62-54 at halftime. But led by Jimmy Butler, the Heat exploded in the third frame, outscoring Boston 39-14. Butler scored 17 of his game high, 41 in the third. Tatum was held at just eight points in the second half. Heat win game one, 118 to 107. Their lack of first half de defense sparked their second half comeback. You know, the guys were just really you know, disappointed uh, at halftime. I barely needed to say anything. Everybody was just disappointed uh, at our defensive uh, effort and focus. Got out tough, out, out physical. Um, they looked like they came out in the second half, you know, and wanted to up their physicality and aggression and on both ends, and they did that. I don't think we obviously responded well to um, on either end of the floor. Emei missed media avail this morning with non-COVID-19 illness. And game two is tomorrow night, 7.30 in Miami. Now things really get interesting for the Spurs, though, because all the guessing starts. And oh, they'll yeah. They'll pick at nine. Will they trade some of those draft picks? What are they going to do? Sure does. In June 23rd. I believe so. Draft. Day. Yes. All right. So we've got a long time to just talk about it all. <laughs> and we all got to listen. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Too close to the sports department. All right, technology <laughs> changing by the day. Advancements have put us at 5G status. So what happens to the 3G tech in your car? The third generation technology is soon going to be a thing of the past. It could impact the future, the features that you use every day, every single day. We're talking about remote start. Oh no, crash assistance, really? Coming up today at five, we're going to tell you where to turn to make you sure that your, your tech in your vehicle will continue to work without needing a replacement. We've got new details about the suspected shooter in Saturday's deadly mass shooting in Buffalo, including how he allegedly shared his plan online just shortly before the attack. ABC's Alexis Christophorus has more from New York. A grieving community in Buffalo, New York, came together last night in a vigil to honor the 10 victims killed and three wounded in Saturday's mass shooting at the top supermarket. Giving me strength and joy. Authorities have accused 18-year-old suspected gunman Peyton Gendron of going on a racist rampage targeting black people. We deserve legislation that condemns white supremacy. We deserve to be safe. The vigil came the same day President Biden and the First Lady visited a memorial site at the supermarket and met with victims' families. The president calling the deadly mass shooting an act of domestic terrorism. Later that night at a White House reception, the president blasting those who perpetuate racist conspiracy theories. We have to not only talk about how we're going to end the hate, but who's responsible for generating it. You have folks on television stations talking about the replacement theory, talking about how we're going to be overtaken. This as new details emerge about how long Gendron allegedly had been planning the deadly attack. Authorities telling ABC News that 30 minutes prior to the attack, the self-professed white supremacist invited a small group of people to join a private group on the social media platform Discord to review his plan. It's unclear who saw the posts, but no one alerted authorities. In December, the suspect allegedly building up an arsenal of weapons. Then in March, multiple posts about his alleged visit to the Topps grocery store to map out his attack. The suspected shooter also posting about taking part in animal abuse, claiming his mother gave him a box to bury a cat he killed. Peyton Gendron has pleaded not guilty to a single count of first-degree murder, but Attorney General Merrick Garland says the Justice Department is also considering charging him with hate crimes and domestic extremism. The suspect is due back in court tomorrow. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. In the day ahead, the Domestic Terrorism Prevention Act of 2022 is up for a vote. As its name indicates, the bill is aimed at preventing domestic terrorism and fighting violent extremism by white supremacists. It would set up offices focused on domestic terrorism at the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Justice, and the FBI. 
They would track and analyze domestic terrorism activity in the goal of preventing it rather than just reacting after the fact. The bill would also call for a report twice a year on the threats we face with a specific section for white supremacists and neo-Nazis. Once the bill passes the Democratic-controlled House as expected, it'll head to the Senate for consideration, but how it'll do there isn't clear. The last seven years on Earth, apparently the warmest on record. That's according to a report released Wednesday by the World Meteorological Association or organization. Officials there also say sea levels rose twice as fast for the 10 years ending in 2021 compared to the previous decade. The average temperatures for 2021 were 1.1% degrees Celsius higher than pre-industrial temps. But that said, it was not the hottest on record. They say it's because of the La Nina phenomena that produced a cooling effect. The WMO's Secretary General predicts it's just a matter of time, though, before the world sees another warmest year on record. In spite of a plea to turn up our thermostats, the state's power grid managers say that they're ready to keep power going in the hot summer months. The Electric Reliability Council of Texas, or ERCOT, said there will be more reserve power available as compared to last summer. But they did not offer much of an update on last week's issues that we experienced. They noted that six plants went down on Friday. The Public Utility Commission says they were caught off guard, but explained they sent out an alert asking Texas Texans to conserve as a precaution. Yeah, I think they wanted us to keep our thermostats at 78. Oh, my goodness. I have to yeah. admit, I didn't forecast, though, giant wasps attacking. Oh, oh again? my gosh. Antonio. We need to name her. Okay. What do you want to name Wanda her? Wanda the wasp. Wanda the wasp. Fuzzy. She's back. She's back. But, you know, so is the heat. The heat's going to be with us today. That's kind of creepy, isn't it? It is. But, yeah. you know, it's probably, is Watch it out. cooler up there or warmer up there? <laughs> It's probably actually a little cooler up there, but maybe by only like half a degree or something. So not very noticeable. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look outside with Wanda the Wasp. Let's cover her up and tell you how uh, hot it is out there. 86 degrees, south winds gusting at about 21 miles per hour. For the rest of the day, it's going to be windy and hot. Temperatures are going to be close to 99 this afternoon, close to 100 degrees this afternoon. That would break a record. Sun's going to set at 821 and it's going to be a mild evening with temperatures in the 80s. What, here's what you need to know. So this afternoon, we're likely going to break that uh, record high temperature of 98. Friday in the weekend, though, we do have a small chance for storms and a bit of a cool down from the record heat. And next week, rain continues to stay in the forecast. At least the chance for rain continues to stay in the forecast. So I've got to look at all this and more coming up in a bit. David Ursula. Thank you so much, Sarah. All right, now to the latest in the war in Ukraine. Finland and Sweden set to jointly submit their NATO applications today, a direct response to Vladimir Putin's invasion. This as Ukrainian fighters in Mariupol are being transported to Russian-controlled cities. ABC's senior foreign correspondent Ian Panel has the details. Overnight, hundreds of Ukrainian fighters at the Avastal steel plant in Mariupol laying down their arms and now evacuating the city. Russia claiming almost a thousand have surrendered so far. The soldiers are being transported to Russian-held areas, but their fate is now uncertain as the Ukrainian government pushes to exchange them for Russian prisoners of war. But Russia saying it intends to interrogate the Ukrainians, and now there are signals from Moscow that some of them could be brought to Russia to face trials. An advisor to President Zelensky applauding their efforts in tying down Russian forces for nearly three months. Saying all these guys basically changed the course of the war. Even so, this is a defeat for Ukraine. With Mariupol now in Russian hands, Russia appears to have created a land bridge connecting Russian territory to occupied Crimea, but they've been unable to achieve other major goals of taking Kyiv and other key cities. One such area is here in the northeast. Ukrainian troops pushing Russian troops back towards the border and now reclaiming land. We've uh, come out to one of the liberated villages. Some of the locals are living around here still. They've stayed in their homes throughout this conflict. And although the Russians have been driven out of this area, as we're seeing in a lot of other areas, the Russians continue to terrorize the local population. In the east, the Russians attempting to push further into the critical Donbass region, attacking the city of Bakhmut. 
In a blow to Vladimir Putin, Sweden and Finland formally submitting their applications to join NATO today. The leaders of both countries are then going to head to Washington, where they're going to meet with President Biden on Thursday. Ian Panel, ABC News in Kharkiv, Ukraine. A two-year-old might still have a lot to learn, but he knows his way around a cell phone pretty good. How a mom discovered her son had ordered dozens of cheeseburgers through DoorDash. Coming up. And there is a softball battle in Arlington between two San Antonio schools. Larry Mears will explain it. Coming up. Have you ever had trouble keeping your burrito closed? <laughs> 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 These are real world problems. All right, there is a new invention that may help make meals less messy. It's tape you put on your food. Coming up. One of the other industries hit by a recent price hike, dairy. Milk prices up in the U.S. and overseas, it could get even worse. The cost of milk in the United Kingdom could skyrocket more than 50% this year. Kite Consulting, which specializes in the UK dairy industry, says between 2020 and 2021, the cost of a half gallon of milk in the UK was between $1.36 and $1.49. The company predicts, though, the price could reach $2.11 this year. That would be a 50% increase from the bottom end of the 2020-2021 range. A new invention could help us messy cooks clean up their meals a little bit. Researchers at Johns Hopkins University say that they have created this. It's called Tasty Tape. Right there. Uh, it's an adhesive that makes sure all the items inside wraps, such as burritos, stay locked inside instead of falling all over your plate or your tie or your blouse. Yeah. It's made from food grade fibrous scaffold and it's an edible adhesive and it's safe to eat. Tasty tape is clear, but the researchers added blue dye to some of it for the video so they can illustrate how it's used. The creators are applying for a patent, so they are not disclo disclosing exactly the tape's formula. My wife would love that because I ruined too many times. Yeah, yeah. It might come in handy. A South Texas two-year-old really loves his cheeseburger so much so he ordered 31 of them from McDonald's. This is one smart kid. His mom, Kelsey Golden, says that he, uh, she got a little bit suspicious when she got a notification from DoorTash explaining that her order was oh. taking a bit long. Problem was, she'd never placed an order with DoorDash. Turned out it was her youngest son, Barrett. He has figured out how to unlock her phone. So if you're wondering how much 31 McDonald's cheeseburgers cost, Ooh. it's $61.58. Barrett was very generous, though. He tipped the driver $16. <laughs> <laughs> Busted his piggy bank on that one. In total, Golden paid $91.70 for the entire order. Had to have fries with it. Barrett ended up only eating a half a burger. Golden says she gave away some of the others to the neighbors. Ooh. Kids are Ooh, just that, smart yeah. these days. Smart oh, phone. man. Oh, Wanda. Wanda's wow. back. Okay, so she's hanging out. Maybe a half a degree cooler up there. Maybe. I think she's building a home. Probably, so we're probably going <laughs> to see Wanda for a little while there on the live cam. <laughs> she's building a nest. Uh, hey, the pollen count. Molds and grass are present, but in low amounts. So good looking pollen count, not so great looking aquifer. The aquifer is down three tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours. That uh, average uh, is 20 feet above <laughs> where we're at right now. So the aquifer continues to fall, unfortunately. Rain chances, though, are going to go up as we head into the weekend and early next week. I've got those details and when we can see temperatures ease off a little bit coming up in just a few minutes. Well, welcome back. You know what? May has been very hot. In fact, every single day this month has been hotter than average, and we've set several records. On the 7th, 9th, 14th, 15th, 16th, and 17th, we've set record highs, or at least tied them. We're 8.4 degrees above average. The hottest we've been is 101 on May 7th and 8th, and the coolest was May 6th. The morning of May 6th, we got down to 65 degrees. So we're going to continue to see 
hotter than average temperatures through Saturday. And a couple of uh, those days could break the records, including today and Saturday. But here's the deal. We do see an end in sight to this heat streak. By Sunday, our highs will be in the 80s, and that'll continue into next week with the possibility for at least some rain. So let's get down to business, talk about the forecast outside. Right now, we're seeing clouds move on off to the east. It's already 96 in Pleasanton, 88 in Kerrville, 88 in Hondo, 88 in Uvalde, 86 here in San Antonio and in New Braunfels. For your KSAT 12-hour forecast, the remainder of this afternoon going to be windy and hot. While mostly sunny skies, winds will be from the south at about 15 miles per hour with gusts of up to 25 miles per hour. We'll top off at 99 for the high temperature right around 5 p.m. The afternoon commute going to be smoking outside. Uh, winds will be from the south, as I said, continuing to gust up to about 25 miles per hour. And in the evening, it will be mild. Temperatures will only be in the 8 80s going to be a warm one for us. All right, that pesky heat high, which has been overhead, has pushed on off to the east a bit and weakened. It's opened up uh, the atmosphere for this trough of low pressure, which is still over Baja, California. But this is going to be moving closer to San Antonio. And by Friday night, it could even fire off some a few showers and storms from San Antonio all the way up to Oklahoma City. Our chance for rain is about 30% with that trough of low pressure meaning that we will have isolated to widely scattered thunderstorms, some of which could be strong. And unfortunately, not everyone is going to see rain. But then as we look into the weekend, by Sunday, we'll have a front move through. It's going to be a weaker front, really only cooling us down by about 10 degrees or so into the 80s. But still, it's something in a break from this uh, really high heat. It will also keep a chance for uh, an isolated shower storm in the forecast through Sunday. And then another trough of low pressure is going to keep things messy. Our weather pattern will be messy as we head into next week, and that's good news because we want to keep rain chances in the forecast. Now, the heaviest of the rain will likely be up north toward Dallas, Fort Worth, and even potentially the Austin area, but we'll still have a chance for isolated to scattered showers and storms through early next week. So at least we have a pattern change here on the horizon. Until then, until Sunday, it's going to stay hot. And even when we have that chance for isolated thunderstorms Friday night or Friday evening, it's still going to be hot. We'll, we'll have to deal with that heat through Saturday. Sunday, we'll see uh, an ease off of the heat as we head into next week. So changes, they're coming. We'll be back right after the break. We had a big matchup at the TAP State Softball Semifinals at UT Arlington, where the Incarnate Shamrocks played the Antonian Apaches. The Shamrocks started their season by losing five in a row in tournament play, including 13-0 to Antonian. But the Shamrocks rebounded to beat the Apaches on April the 5th, 8-5, only to close out their regular season with a 3-1 loss to them, but they still won district. This marks their fourth meeting of the season with much higher stakes. We've been in the playoffs every year, but the outcome's not always the same, and this is the furthest we've made it. In the past two years, my, the only other time we've been to the Final Four is my freshman year, so this is pretty special. It's honestly really awesome because it's just cool to make it to the playoffs. I mean, you can say you made it round one and then you make it round two. Um, so, I mean, it's really cool to make it past round one and two and get to Final Four and things like that. There's no question these two teams have history in just this season alone that left the Apaches finishing second in district to the Shamrocks. But remember, for Antonian, they were at the state softball tournament last year. This is a very special season in particular because we have seven seniors this year, so seven girls I grew up with, and you know we've looked forward to this moment. Um, year two, going back to state, so I'm really excited to see how it goes. We've played them a couple times this year, obviously, in district. And it's always a good game. It's always fun. The parents get all into it. We get all out, and it's a lot of fun. The fun started this morning at 10. Let's go to the scoreboard now for that final score. And Antonian beat in Carter Word 7-2, advancing to the Taps Division I state final tomorrow. The third round of high school baseball playoffs starting Thursday night will feature the Smithson Valley Rangers against the Reagan Rattlers. The scheduled three-game series will be played at any ISD sports park. The Rangers were able to eliminate Westlake in a hard-fought series by taking Game 3 Saturday 5-4, and now they go up against the Rattlers. A lot of teams have... have sought revenge on us this year because of what we did last year and then you know we can just add them to the list team seeking revenge and I mean every time we play them it's like we want revenge on them as well it's just it's just how it is. We get to play against some guys that I've known for a long time some guys I've been playing them with a long time so it's really exciting to be playing against these guys once again. 
The Reagan Rattlers got to the third round of the Region 4 High School Baseball Playoffs by winning back-to-back -back games against Cedar Ridge 19-3 and 4-3. Now they'll face their rivals in the Rangers after the Rangers eliminated them in round three last season, two games to one. A little rivalry going, you know, we played in thir third round last year and um, uh, I mean, it's, it's a big week, and we, we've got a lot of focus this week. We, we know what's on the line, and we know our season's at stake, and it's, uh, it's playoffs, so any, anything can happen. Best of three series starts tomorrow night at 7.30. In the bigs, the Astros hit five home runs in the second inning yesterday, and this guy caught two of them, one after it bounced off the wall and the other on the fly in just a span of three batters, folks. His hand hurt, but definitely worth it. Houston hit six total homers to thrash the Red Sox 13-4, and also the Rangers beat the Angels 10-5. David, first look. Thank you, Larry. guy. He's sitting yeah. in the right spot. He needs a glove. <laughs> it's Fiona. It's Fiona. It's a solo Fiona. And Fiona yes. and I, hey, look what we did again. We matched. Mm. Oh, you're in my head. I love it. All right, well, summertime is definitely grilling time in South Texas. And I guess, you know, for us, we're sizzling in the heat, right? <laughs> you know, while the food sizzles on the grill. And Shailene McNeil, registered dietitian with Beef Love and Texans, is here to show us a new recipe to up your grill game, okay? But... You know, you have a tip for when you're when you're grilling with a certain kind of steak, right? Yeah, we're going to talk about this because the thing is, is that you've learned certain methods about grilling and a lot of people get really nervous, but we have a new technique that you might not have heard about that's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to, it's great for starters too, for people just learning to grill. Makes me think of Finding Nemo too. Yeah. You'll, you'll, you'll understand that in a little bit. And of course, flank steak versus skirt steak. They look similar, but there's a difference. They look so similar. They both have robust to intense flavor, but flank steak you marinate, skirt steak you can sear, so they're a little different, so don't get them confused. All right, and of course, Jen is checking out a very unique baseball team. Today on SA Live, we get a preview for the San Antonio Jets, the Beep baseball team, bringing the blind community together for the love of baseball. All right, and we continue to celebrate Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month with delicious delicacies from the Philippines. All that. It's 90 degrees right now, so we're likely going to break a record high for the fifth day in a row. It'll be near 100 degrees through Saturday. A chance for rain starts Friday night, and we'll see chances of rain that continue through our forecast through early next week. While it likely won't be a washout, at least there's the chance for some showers and storms mixed in there, and also temperatures cool down a bit too. Sunday through Tuesday, our highs will only be in the 80s. David and Ursula. Very nice. Ooh. I only remember one thing of that whole tease that uh, Fiona did, or that was that steak sitting on that cutting board. That's all I remember. SA Live Such a dude. Yes, <laughs> they live starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from Historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Oh, hello and happy Wednesday. Yes, it's going to be a sizzling good time on the show today as we gear up for grilling season, which is, you know, pretty much already underway. Good afternoon. I'm Fiona Gorostiza. Mike Osrage, of course, is off today. So we saw something, according to a recent survey, uh, and I've kind of noticed this, that like teenagers, they don't really decorate their bedroom walls with pictures of, you know, fans or singers or their celebrity uh, crushes anymore. And I mean, I know that we used to back in the day, right? Okay, and technology has played a role in that, you know, because in the 60s you had record players, you know, in the 80s cassette tapes, 90s you had CDs, and that influenced, you know, the decor you put on your bedroom walls. You know, you maybe had a Beatles poster in the 60s, maybe in the 80s a Menudo or Michael Jackson, and in the 90s, let's say maybe Destiny's Child or Pearl Jam, right? So our question of the day is to age yourself with a poster that you had on your walls as a teenager. Let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, let's see, mine were, you know, mine were ceiling to floor left to right. And I had, let's see, maybe New Kids on the Block, U2, Boys to Men, and Vogue, TLC, Destiny's Child. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. All right, so let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, and hopefully we'll see some of those a little later. 
One good thing, of course, about long summers here in South Texas, lots of perfect grilling weather. And it's also a, a good chance to try something new on the grill. And Shailene McNeil, registered dietitian with Beef Love and Texans, is here to show us a new recipe to help kick off summer and grilling season. But first, Shailene, give us the poster that was on your wall as a teenager, any of them. Oh, it was George Strait, one and only, <laughs> one poster, big poster, George Strait. It was awesome. Yes, so much daydreaming, right? Oh, I kept thinking that I he might find me if I get that poster in there. Um, so I love it. Okay, so what are we making and how do we get started? We are going to do a marinated citrus flank steak. I love the flank steak. I already have it in my little bag here okay. because it's lean and it's so robust in flavor, so intense beefy flavor. But it needs a little help with the marination, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a marinade, and I've already got that going in my processor. I'm starting with some fresh um, onions, the citrus, mm -hmm. uh, some orange juice. Uh, a little bit of vinegar, Worcestershire, I've got some fresh garlic, a little bit of salt, and then some adobe, and, uh, chili and adobe sauce. And I'm going to just get that processing and show you like how you make this marinade so easy. Just remember, any time you make a marinade, that citrus helps tenderize that beef. So that's awesome. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take our flank steak and we're gonna add our marinade. I think you've got one by the magic of TV already ready for us. Ta-da! There it if is. If only it worked, that can help. Right? So this has been tenderized all This has been ready, tenderized right? and marinating mm -hmm. in the refrigerator right. for 16 to 24 hours. So I did a whole day. Okay. And, I, and I bought tenderized flank steak too. So now the thing is, is remember I told you I was gonna share you that tip yes. about grilling. A lot of us have learned never flip. We're yes. gonna do just You're keep flipping. Leave it. So we're gonna do, oh, yes. See, this is the Finding Nemo portion, folks. Yes. Just keep flipping. Just, just keep, flipping. keep flipping. So go ahead and pull it out. Beef Loving Texans loves this tip that Just Priles also shares, a Texas fire cook. So you're going to keep dry it off just okay. a little bit, just like you're doing. The two tips for just keep flipping is hot. So you want to put it on a hot grill. We've got that good and hot right now. And you've got it dry, so it's not going to uh, use the juices to interfere with that grilling. So go ahead and put okay. it on. And this is great for beginner grillers, it's right? It's great for beginner grilling because you're just going to keep flipping it every 30 seconds. Flip it and that allows you, if you're a beginner, you don't have to guess. Where's the heat coming right. through? Is it getting more done on one side, one more done on another side? So while that's good, I'm going to keep you to task because okay. I'm going to also have you okay. make a roasted salsa while we're doing that. All so right. I will take off my gloves and move this salsa a little bit closer and you can start adding those ingredients while we're doing that. Just add in a little cilantro. You're going to add lime juice, chili powder, jalapenos, and red onions. Remember, Beef Loving Texans has all of these ingredients and the go-to tips for how to make that perfect grilled steak. So you're doing a great job okay. there. It's so easy. Just kind of toss that roasted corn salsa all together. And then when we are when we take this off the grill, mm -hmm. we have our hearty, protein-rich beef steak, our fresh salsa. Like I've shown here, you can carve that and serve it as a salad. You could put it on tacos. That looks delicious, Just Fiona. keep flipping. Just keep flipping. <laughs> now, at the beginning of that, it's, you know, kind of yeah. underwhelming. You don't really see much. But as you go on, every 30 seconds or so, you're going to see that brown flavor just start to build. Oh, yeah. And that delicious beefy flavor is going to come out. So fun. All right. So we've got this. We've got, we've got our corn. And, okay. and we're ready to serve. I okay. mean, it's so easy. You can do this out on the grill, do it poolside for Memorial Day. I love it. Another tip I love to share because we got to admit, food prices are up. And so I like buying my flake steak already tenderized because that takes out some of the guesswork out of it. And then I like marinating it so that adds flavor and then pairing it with vegetables because vegetables are one of those food groups that hasn't gone up in price as much. So we get a Which balance of budget. Which is good to keep in mind. Shop the outskirts, right? One more reason <laughs> to include veggies in your diet and beef pairs so well with veggies. You get a balanced meal, a hearty meal, a fresh and uh, uh, so hot outside. So I like this cold too. So it's an easy, fun way to get something different, you know. And of course, coming up, we're going to be doing a recipe with skirt steak, right? Skirt steak. And for anyone who missed it, you know, just skirt steak, flank steak, they can they can look similar, but there is a difference. That's right. We're not going to marinate our skirt steak. You'll see we're going to actually use some very simple seasonings and get that right on the grill, where our flank steak is also delicious, but was marinating for about a day in the refrigerator before we put it on that grill. 
And of course, you can find so many other recipes on the website, right? Beef Loving Texans. Uh, this is your resource, beeflovingtexans.com, all things beef and great pairing ideas. It's, you know, grilling season is Memorial through Labor Day, so we've got the whole summer to experiment and try all these fun recipes. Okay, and of course, always cut against the grain, right? That's right. All right. For a link to more great recipes from Beef Love and Texans, just go to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just snap that QR code on your screen. All right, Shailene, we're going to check in with you again in a bit. Well, the San Antonio Jets are the Alamo City's only beef baseball team in town, allowing folks with vision impairments, uh, vision impairments to play the game they love. And this season, the team is set on winning the Beep Baseball World Series, and they're getting a little help to make sure they can make it to all those out-of-town tournaments. It's a game based on sound, a beeping baseball, for a team that must listen to play. The game is very important because um, we, we can't play other sports like baseball or softball. So b-ball was created so that people like us who have blindness and visual impairments uh, can get a little taste of what it's like to play the sport of baseball. The San Antonio Jets originated in 2016. This summer, they will start their trek to the Beep Baseball World Series. Uh, the, the Jets plan on taking the championship this year. Last year, we we fell short at the very end. We lost in the championship game to a walk-off home run, which was amazing for the sport of beatball um, and amazing for the player who did it. Uh, however, we haven't forgotten, and we have a sour taste in our mouth, and we're ready to take the ship this year for San Antonio. David Smith is one of the team captains. He tells me representing San Antonio is what makes this team proud. Many of them are blind, others have vision impairments, making it difficult to work full-time jobs and raise money to support the team. Individually, we go through tri uh, you know, tribulations, you know, trials because of our vision. Things are a little bit harder for us um, than most other people. And, you know, it could, it, it could, it could take its toll on you. Smith works for WellMed. He asked them if they would be willing to sponsor the Jets this year, but they weren't expecting this. So we are here to present a sponsorship to you all. We heard about what you're doing and we think that it's excellent. I'm so glad that you have a way to play baseball. That's important, right? Um, so originally our plan was to support you with $2,500, but today we're surprising you with $5,000. Got me. They, they tricked me, man. <laughs> but I'm not surprised. And we have a uh, employee at WellMed who's a member of the team, David Smith. So that's how we were introduced to what's going on here today. So we thought we'd come out here and check it out. We did hear that they were looking for a sponsor for their uniforms. Uh, so it's going to help with a lot, uh, you know, traveling costs, lodging costs, um, maybe some new jerseys. So it's going to it's going to go a long way and, and help us. Not have to, we, we can focus on winning the championship. We, don't, we won't have to focus on where we're gonna get this money from. Like many sports, this game is uniting a group that is passionate, competitive, and dedicated. Set, ready, ball. It's all right, it's all right. We're a solid group, uh, you know, the great group of guys, they have their own individual amazing stories. And uh, to me, we're literally, out here, every time we're out here, every time we present a team, we're, we're writing the greatest beatball story ever told, so. Sir, ready, ball. If you're interested in keeping up with the San Antonio Jets, maybe even joining the team, just head over to their Facebook page where you can contact them and inquire. This team is, is built to bring, you know, broken people together and we build each other back up. And so it's, it's very life changing for all of us. And, you know, anybody who needs, you know, what we got, come on out. We need the whole city of San Antonio behind us. We would love to bring a, a world championship back to San Antonio. We would love to have the support of the city behind us. We got the city, we got the world, be the king of the hill.
The San Antonio Jets head to their first tournament in early June, and we have their Facebook page linked on our SA Live page. All you have to do is head to our As Seen on SA Live page, where you can just click on their link or just scan that QR code on your screen. And of course, good luck to them all. Don't forget, if you know someone who would like to join the team or the Little Jets, you can inquire on that same Facebook page. All right, still ahead on the show, a local dog saved from the streets. Now he's got an important mission and he's going to change lives. We'll tell you where he's headed. But first, a military spouse finds a sweet way to make friends in a new city. See what she's bringing to San Antonio and how she's already won awards for it in the past. It's next on SA Live. We got the city, we got the world, be the king of the hill. 